When you are in a tough real estate market, like much of Canada is experiencing today, buyers have the upper hand. This was true in much of the 1980s, part of the 1990s, the early 2010s, 2019, and yes, again today as of shooting this video in 2024. And the truth of today's market is that when I meet with a seller looking to part ways with their family home or maybe an investment property, generally they still have plenty of equity in their property, but they just don't want to sell for less than they had hoped for or less than what their neighbor has sold for weeks or months ago. Because every seller I have ever met has a number in mind of what they want to sell for. Not always because that number is market value, but because that's the price they want or need to sell for. So sorry to break it to you folks, if you're selling your home, what you need to sell for means absolutely squat to buyers and the marketplace. And no, even though I will probably tell you a number less than what you want to hear, it's not because I want a quick sale as a greedy realtor trying to slam a deal together, but rather that I know in a declining market, the selling price that happens sooner or today is going to be a higher number than if you sell in the future because the market's going down. So let's go through five key considerations that you may not have thought about before setting your asking price for sale in this market. But first, I'm Steve, and I've been selling real estate here in Surrey and the Fraser Valley for more than 15 years now. So please subscribe to the channel if you would like to stay up to date on my local market. And make sure to click the like button if you like free information like this. It really does help the channel, so thank you for that. And if you are having a tough time grasping this tough market, maybe you were unsuccessful the last time you tried to sell your property, and you're looking for a fresh approach, well, you can book a call with me right now using the link in the description below at a time that works best for you. And right after these first five points to consider, stick around because I'm going to talk more about market evaluations and the three key statuses of listings you should know to price your home right for sale. If indeed you actually want to sell and don't just want your number. So the first thing that any agent does when helping guide you through pricing your home is to take a look at comparable sales of other listings in the marketplace. Sounds simple, right? Do a search of homes to see what things are going for. But when doing that search, you want to consider the following. First, when the comparable property sold and what the market has done between then and now. If you're in a subdivision and your exact same floor plan of your home sold a month and a half or two months ago or even last week and the market's either going up or down, your home price will definitely reflect the current market conditions. There's of course your house is bigger and better. I hear that all the time. I've never met somebody whose house isn't better than their neighbors down the street, according to them. And of course, yes, renovations and different things like that are going to come into play. But what you have to do is take a look at the market. If the market has decreased 5% since your neighbor sold down the road, there's a very good chance you're going to have to decrease what would have been the same selling price at that time by 5%. So if you have fewer renovations, possibly, or a smaller square footage than your neighbor did down the road, you have to think about what that price would have been in comparison to when your neighbor sold, and then also discount it whatever the market's done. And this can work also going in the other direction. If the market's come up 5% since your neighbor sold, you're probably gonna want to increase your price. Second, and it's very, very hard to do this, you have to think about how close is your property as a comparable listing to the ones that actually sold or that are for sale. Size, age, and condition of your property matter a whole lot. For example, in an area where I live, there's a lot of homes that are similar square footages, but many of them have four bedrooms on the top floor and others have three bedrooms on the top floor. Many, many, many more buyers are interested in a four bedroom home than a three bedroom home. So they're no longer comparable. You have to adjust for the difference in bedrooms. The same can be said for a brand new home. Brand new homes sell for more money. It's just the way it is. So if you're saying, hey, that guy down the street has the same square footage as me, same size lot, but 
you're 20 years old and he's two years old, he's going to sell for more than you. There's a really good chance he's going to sell for more than you, even if you've done a crazy amount of updates at the time because your property is just older. The land itself continues to rise in value over time. The actual structure, believe it or not, decreases in value. So you have to, as a seller, have a very tough conversation with your inner self to decide, am I really comparable to the one down the street? Am I better than the one down the street? And how do we compare in the eyes of the buyer? Third on the list kind of reflects back onto number one, where was the market? And I want to focus a little bit more on where the market is going. Here's like some random numbers we can use. Let's say I thought my house was worth a million dollars on the market because my neighbor sold for one million dollars. But that was a couple of months ago. The market has decreased, I don't know, again, let's call it 5%. So now I should sell for 950. But statistics in real estate do lag. And if the market is continuing to fall since those last statistics have come out, well, then there's a good chance we're down another two or three or four percent since then if we're continuing along the same trend. So if you price yourself, even what you think is a really good price now at 949 and your neighbor sold for a million bucks, there's a good chance by the time you come up with that price and then come to market one, two, three, four weeks later, there's a chance the market has slid even more and you need to reduce your price even further. This is why it's so terrible for sellers in a declining market to try a higher price because sure, your neighbor sold for a million bucks. You want to sell at $9.99. You think it's reasonable because your neighbor did. By the time you come down to the $9.49 that maybe your agent suggested, the market's actually slipped to $9.29 and you're, you're just extremely frustrated because now you're trying to catch the market and the market's coming down. The only way to catch the market, if it, right now it's a pop fly and it's coming down at you, you got to get underneath the market by the time you go for sale. And the same thing can be said the other way, except when the market's going up, you have a lot more leeway because if you underprice your home in a time when the market's going up, you're going to get multiple offers. You're going to drive that price right up. Now this all has to do with sales, but now you have to analyze how much competition do you have? In a marketplace like we've seen over the last much of the last decade, we were in a spot where you didn't have a lot of competition. There would be one or two or three homes in the whole neighborhood for sale. Now there might be one or two or three homes just on your street. So you have to take a look at how much competition you have. And you really have to, again, reflect on the inside and go, is the buyer going to value that home more than mine? That could be in price. It usually is in price, but it could be in condition, other features of the home and layout. Sometimes the buyers just reflect on certain aspects of the home and they pick those ones because of a style that they prefer. You don't prefer that style. You didn't buy that house when you moved into the neighborhood, but they prefer that style. So they're just not your right buyer. But if you've got a lot of competition, well, now you're going to be in trouble. This is something we're seeing in our condo market right now. There's a whole ton of listings all remaining at those high prices from three to six months ago, and they're just not selling, but they could maybe be not selling for a reason that you hadn't yet considered. Of course, price is high, but when you have a lot of competition, the property needs to be in great shape. What we're experiencing right now in the marketplace is buyers are actually willing to pay still a very, very good dollar, maybe not as much as three or four months ago, but a very, very good dollar for the best kept units. And in the condo market, there are a lot of tenanted properties that are in really, really rough shape. So keep an eye on your competition because you got to understand that when a buyer goes out to see a, a property, they're not just coming out to see your property. They're not evaluating, is your property worth it? They're evaluating, is your property worth it compared to all of the other properties I'm seeing? And if you're not getting offers, the answer is, is no. And the fifth thing you will want to consider before you put your property on the market is trying to identify who the buyer is for your home and on top of that, if they are active right now in the market. Now, this is something that seems ridiculous. A lot of people will say, well, I don't know who the buyer is going to be. If you're hired an experienced agent that knows the market, they're probably going to have a pretty good idea of exactly who your buyer is going to be. And yes, this means kind of stereotyping people into a type of property. 
for instance. Again, let's go back to the condo market. If it's a one bedroom condo, it's likely a first time buyer or an investor. Those are probably your people. Depending on the area of town you're in, they could be of different ethnicities. They could negotiate in different ways. Let me give you a, an example. Uh, recently, I had a home for sale. Uh, it was a detached home. It had a basement suite in it. Uh, so now I know I'm looking for probably a family. And uh, in this particular home, probably a family that's looking for some sort of mortgage help. However, I do know the area. And the area is not really a mortgage help type of area. But at the same time, the basement suite had what we call a walkout. It's a nice bright basement suite, not one of those dungeon ones that's below ground or, or whatnot. So when I'm looking at this going, okay, it's an expensive luxury home in an area that doesn't traditionally have basement suites and it's a walkout, it's perfect for an in-law to live downstairs rather than a tenant that the family doesn't know. And we received multiple offers on the property and that's exactly who was offering and who successfully secured the home. But going back to like a first time buyer or an investor, you have to ask yourself, are those people active in the marketplace right now? If you have a two bedroom condo, it's a really tough go in a lot of the marketplace right now because well, there's not a lot of first time buyers out there to be perfectly honest, and there's not a ton of investors looking to enter the market. They're, they're dabbling around as I pointed out in this video right here, but they haven't flooded yet back to the marketplace. So if you're looking to sell a condo right now to a first time buyer and investor, it's going to be a lot tougher go. Say for instance, that if you're trying to sell a property, uh, like a townhouse, a small affordable townhouse to a family on a budget, it's going to be a lot easier because there's more of those people in the marketplace right now. Investors don't have to buy family kind of has to buy, or they got to go find a rental. So in this market, uh, those properties may or may not have buyers in the marketplace. So you should probably consider who your buyer most likely will be. And then as I promised, I want you to understand the three different types of listings that we're going to use in these comparable market analysis so you can better understand what you're looking at out there. The three types of listings are first off, active listings. This means your competition or other homes that are currently on the marketplace. You as the public, you can see these homes. They're on the MLS, they're on realtor.ca, they're on my website. So it's your competition. It's the same homes that your buyers are going to go look at when they're coming to see your home. So you want to really narrow them down and see what the competition is. If there's lots of competition, as I mentioned earlier, you could be in trouble because there's lots and lots to pick from. But here's the mistake that every single, every single seller makes with active listings. They say to me, that one down the street is going for X amount of dollars or that one, or they're going for this amount in the neighborhood. No, they're not going for that. That's what they're sitting for. They're not going at all. If they were going, they would be a sold. Now, if it's a fresh listing on the market, one, two weeks, fine. Maybe they are going for that. Maybe they have offers, but if they've been on the market 60 or 90 days, they're not going for that price at all. They're sitting, they're active on the marketplace. So then your goal is to beat those people to a sale if you're trying to sell. What you don't want to do is price your home so high that you cause somebody else to look like the better deal. You have to make sure that you're priced correctly so you look like the best deal because in this marketplace, no buyer is looking for a bad deal. They're looking for the best deal for them. And you have to keep that in mind. If you're not getting offers, it's because the buyers are saying, hey, your home at that price is not the best deal for me. The next type of asset class we have to look at is expired listings. These are listings that have failed to sell because they were asking for too much. Now, some people will say to me, well, that house had a problem with it. That's why it failed to sell. Yes, it could have had a problem with it, but if the price was adjusted for that problem in compensation to the buyer, the home would sell. This happens all the time. We sell terrible properties all the time. They don't expire if there is good value there for the buyer. So if the property's in bad shape, got to bring the price down. Not a problem at all. Now with expired listings, those are listings that came to the end of their term with the listing agent and their seller. 
and then they just came off the market. But when you're looking at expired listings, you may also want to look at two other categories. There's something called cancel protected, meaning the seller took it off the market and they're just no longer interested in selling. So it's canceled and the, uh, I guess, agency you would call it is still protected. They didn't fire their agent because they're unhappy with them. They just were like, listen, I'm not going to sell. Then there's another type of listing called terminated. Terminated means the agent no longer represents them. They've parted ways. They've taken the property completely off of the marketplace. Maybe they'll come back to the market with a different agent or even the same agent. Um, but likely you should consider also expired, terminated, and cancel protected listings to find out how much value is too much for comparable homes. And last, of course, is actual sold listings. Now, recently on our real estate board here in Surrey in the Fraser Valley, there's a couple different categories for listings, whether or not they're sold, conditional, unconditional, pending, closed, those sort of things. But let's just call them sold listings. A buyer came to that listing, offered, and a buyer and seller came to agreement on what actual value is. So when you see a sold listing, that is actual value. Usually actual value is a place where a buyer feels like they're paying too much and a seller feels like they're not getting enough. That's normal in the marketplace. It's the uncomfortable zone in between the buyer and seller, but it does bring a deal together. That is market value where both parties are happy. Now here's a trap. Every seller, again, that I meet, they say, well, that one that sold down the road for, in this situation, a million bucks that we were talking about before, they had to sell. I don't have to sell, so I'm going to ask for more. Great. You can think they had to sell and they were under pressure and they undersold their property. Trust me, there's no properties that are going to be undersold uh, in this marketplace right now. It is a tough market. If buyers are coming, you should be thankful that you have offers. It's a tough, tough, tough market. The chances are that somebody went to market and then didn't receive market value is extremely sl slim. Here is where people do undersell. Private sales. Those guys that come around, knock on your door and say, oh, don't worry about a realtor. I'll buy it off you directly. Pick your closing date. Those guys, you are underselling your home 100% to those guys. I guarantee it. Not by 100%, maybe by 10%, maybe by 20%. But when your property goes to market, the buyers will flood there. Now, if you accept an offer too quickly, in a, you could be underselling. Like if you uh, accepted an offer in the first day and you had 35 showing requests over the weekend, you've probably undersold the property. But if you've been on the market for seven days and only received one offer, you're probably not underselling the property. But either way, sold listings in the data are actual market value. So those are the listings with all of these that you need to pay the most attention to. What they're going for as an active doesn't matter. If they expired, they weren't going for that at all. They came right off the marketplace and sold is where the real value is. And then going taking that sold information all the way back to point number one, how long ago did that happen? Did it happen six months ago when the market was 12% higher or did it happen three years ago, which is way too far, by the way, when the market was 20% lower, Like right? These are the things that we have to consider. And I guess on a last note, I will let you know that when I'm doing an evaluation, I do my absolute best to not look back more than really 30 to 60 days is, is the sweet spot to see what prices are actually doing now. Once I go back as far as 90 days in a market as volatile as this one, I'm not getting accurate pricing any longer. And again, if you are looking to sell your home in this marketplace, understand it's not easy to do. And if you need help, well, you can book a call with me right now using the link in the description below at a time that works best for you. Thank you for subscribing, clicking the like button, and we'll see you in a couple of days.